And politics aside, education will be one of the bigger policy tasks facing the Prime Minister this year. Today's major review of school funding has urged the government to spend billions more and rewrite the rule book on how public money is handed out. David Gonski's inquiry is the biggest rethink on education for almost 40 years and he's receiving some decent grades for his work. Shortly I'll be speaking with the School Education Minister Peter Garrett, but as Hayden Cooper reports, there's no guarantee that the ideas of this landmark review will ever be released. It costs government $40 billion a year affects millions of parents and children. So it's little wonder that the education of young Australians is a topic of endless debate. From the outset, I saw the invitation to lead this review as a genuine opportunity to change things for the better and to make a real difference in the lives of young Australians. The fact is that this report continues an unstoppable journey on making sure that every school in Australia is the best that it can be for the kids in our country. When Julia Gillard commissioned this report, she was the Education Minister. Now, almost two years on, she's a Prime Minister who lists school reform as a topic close to her heart. We're here today because education is at the centre of my vision for our nation's future. Nothing is more important to what will happen in tomorrow's economy than what is happening in our schools today. So what is wrong with Australia's schools today? David Gonski's report finds the existing funding arrangement is unnecessarily complex, lacks coherence and transparency, involves duplication and a lack of coordination between governments. The report considers current funding arrangements and concludes that Australia lacks a logical, consistent and publicly transparent approach to funding schooling. Importantly, the report says that differences in educational outcomes must not be the result of differences in wealth, income, power or possessions. In short, the proposed changes would cost governments another $5 billion, mostly for public schools. The report recommends all funding for schooling be based on a new schooling resource standard, a per student dollar figure, the cost of educating a child. Extra loadings would be added for certain needs, like teaching kids from poor backgrounds, indigenous areas and those with poor English skills. A school's size and its location could also attract an increase. We now have a set of recommendations for a new system of funding our schools in Australia, a system that will better target funding to meet the needs of our children, and we also have a recommendation for the injection of a further $5 billion into school education. All government schools would be fully publicly funded to the level of the new standard. For non-government schools, the level of private fees paid by parents will be taken into account. The higher the fees, the lower the public funding. But the panel recommends that for each student in a private school, the government should pay a minimum of 20 to 25 per cent of the cost. Essentially now every non-government school is on a private school hit list. Familiar dividing lines are opening up. The truth in this country is that the state governments are responsible for state schools and the federal government is the largest funder of non-government schools. That has worked in the past and it will work in the future. Uh, this review relies on the state governments and territory governments each finding 15% more uh, to fund uh, public schools uh, and the Commonwealth to find 15% more. Uh, quite frankly, I think the states will find that very hard to achieve and that's why I think this uh, this review has been set up to fail by the government. There is no hit list. I understand this has been uh, raised in the public debate. Uh, there is no hit list. This is about all children in all schools. Uh, the challenge that we are being confronted with as a nation is that at the top we are falling behind the standards of the world and we've got an unacceptable gap between the top and the bottom in terms of students from wealthier backgrounds and students from poorer backgrounds. Oh, well, look, I think uh, David Gonski and the review panel have done a pretty good job 
and I'd give them a B plus. OK, here we go. All right. Most of Tim Hawkes' students at Sydney's King's School come from wealthier backgrounds. And he's reasonably upbeat about the recommendations, notwithstanding a few concerns. I don't think there are going to be many people that can actually criticise the ideas uh, within it, although there are a few which I think uh, are unfortunate, such as we're still running with this war between federal and state funding bodies. I think that that's just such a shame that we've missed that opportunity. But on the whole, I think most of the other ideas are generally pretty sound. And I think David Gonski et al. are to be congratulated. He worries, though, that some non-government schools could suffer. It sort of talks about if a school has the capacity to raise monies uh, by itself, um, that that somehow may well lead to a school being penalised in the amount of funding. Well, if Tim Hawkes has given it a B plus, I, th I think I'm happy to give it an A. Dr Helen Proctor praises the work of David Gonski. But what about the politicians whose task it is now to make the report happen? I'm very worried about that because I think it's been a really good process and I think the Gonski committee have done their utmost not to buy into any sort of politics. And it just worries me that, um, yes, that the politics could derail it. Politics and a stretched federal budget. Of course we're going to do the in-detailed work now and I'm not going to make financial commitments for forthcoming government budgets until... I'm not going to make financial commitments for forthcoming government budgets until we've done all of that work. In fact, the government's making no firm commitments at all. These changes remain ideas only. There's just the promise of more discussion. The Gonski report was set up because uh, the government didn't know what to do. It was a delaying decision, just giving them two years to think about what to do. Now it's come out, um, it hasn't given definitive answers uh, and the government now wants to spend more time on consultation. So as a sort of public policy process, it's been rather poorly done. Hayden Cooper with that report.